This is the video to help you fill out the logbook for P2 Mechanical Engineering Technology. This is the filling in of the P2 logbook. So obviously you've, done, you've completed your P1 and by now you're familiar with how to fill in a, a UJ Mechanical Technology logbook. You'll notice here at the top section you have to fill in your details again. In the middle section here you have to employ, you fill in your employer's details. At the bottom again you've got some important instructions. Please read them and make sure that you follow them. This is the page that's got my contact information. You'll note my email address. Please make sure that you correspond with me by email. The index page to find your way through the logbook. Again, page 4. You will need to fill page 4 in again and send it to me. Just a recap. You need to fill in your details at the top here. The start date and end date of your P2, very important. The name of the company and the physical address of where you're doing your training. Again, please do not fill in a PO box number. I cannot find you with a PO box. And then very importantly, the details of either the supervisor, mentor or training officer in this bottom section. Please fill this in, scan it and email it back to me. I need this within two weeks. Procedures like before, you've seen these before, they're on the notice board and they've been handed out and discussed in the classroom. We're now on page six. This details the guidelines. There are guidelines for the student as well as guidelines for the employer. Of note, on the third paragraph you'll note that it states that employer is required to offer a minimum of 60% of the requirements that percentage was 80%. I'll explain to you why. We are now on page 8. The minimum requirements for P2 are described in two different places in the logbook. Page 8 and page 9 detail this for you. Please read it and allow your employer to read it as well. We are now on page 10. The documentation requirements as before for P1, you will need to fill in training reports, summary data sheets and executive summaries. But in addition, there will be a project report that you will have to complete. We'll discuss this towards the end. On page 11, you'll find the second place where the requirements are described. There's a slight difference to what you see here from P1. First of all, at the top section here, there are two items, item 1 and item 2. Under item 1, you'll see a number of activities listed. These are things like maintenance, manufacturing, development, laboratory, inspection, testing, construction or on-site environments. Item 1 is describing your physical, hands-on activities that you would be required to complete while you're at the company. Item 2 describes office experience. Typically you would be involved in a drawing office or a design office or project office, procurement, buying, quality control and any other office experience. The Engineering Council expects you to complete both hands-on physical activities as well as office experiences within your P2. P2 in reality is about project work. We typically talk about something called the project life cycle. I've itemized here a series of activities that you would complete during a project. A P2 student typically completes two to three projects in a six month period. However, some students, for example, students that would go to a company like Eskom, would possibly only do one project. Some companies offer many more projects of a shorter duration, but many more of them. But typically, two to three projects is about the average. Read these items of activity that you're expected to complete during a project. Typically, you would have a problem that needs to be solved. You need to first of all gather information so that you can define the problem. You would then work your way through to find a solution to solve the problem. You'd possibly have to do some calculations, generate drawings, 
then implement that solution. That could typically involve things like fabrication, manufacturing, assembly, and those kind of things. When the item is complete, you possibly have to install it and test it, and once the required performance is achieved, the project is complete and you get handover. That is a typical project life cycle. The total time period at the bottom of page 11 is 24 weeks. That is also not negotiable. The filling in of the training reports. Well, you've done this before for P1, but we'll just do a quick recap. Remember that you need to write a short summarized description of the activity that you've completed, the date when you completed that activity, and your signature against that date. You will then hand this to your supervisor. They will then read it and make sure that they agree with what you've written. They will sign it and then give you an evaluation, either one or two. One meaning that you're competent, two meaning that you're not yet competent. When that activity is described and complete, you will then fill in the next activity and so on and so on. Please remember that your training report pages, at the bottom of each page, you need to have your uh, supervisor writing comments and signing it off. When that page is complete, you go on to the next page and so on and so on. Please make sure that you describe all your activities, including all your project work in your training reports. You cannot hope to get a credit for P2 if you've only filled in two or three pages of your training reports. I repeat again, all your training must be described in your training reports, including your project work. You'll note that I've put in quite a few training report pages, as I did for P1. Should you find yourself running out of training report pages, you know what to do. You make a copy of the last page before you fill it in, bind it into the logbook, and continue filling in. Like for P1, we are now at the summary data sheet and executive summary pages. As before, you'll find that these two pages are duplicated. You need to fill them in twice. The table has an itemized list of activities. Those of you with a keen eye for detail will note that the activities listed under 1 and 2 on page 11 are the details that are itemized on the left-hand column of this table. Like in P1, you will have to write a summarized description of what you've done against each of those activities. You'll note that towards the bottom of the table, you'll see a row which says other. You might find yourself doing activities which are not listed. You're of course welcome to fill in in that space. The projects that you've completed, short summarized description of the projects that you've done. And then very importantly for P2, any courses that you might have attended which the company has sent you on. Typically students at P2 find themselves getting involved in computer programming type courses, finite element analysis type courses, any courses which are relevant to the company and they wish you to do, you can detail in that space provided. Again. The second last column has the number of weeks that you've spent against each of those activities. Fill those in, sign your entries. At the bottom of the table, the total of number, number of weeks should be 24 weeks. Sign that. When the table is complete, let your supervisor read it, review it, and if they agree, then sign it off. Again, this is your training report summary. It's your report card. The 60% of the requirements applies to these activities. Should there be any activities that you have completed in place of some of these activities, you're welcome to fill them in under the space other. You need to fill this table in twice. The executive summary, this again is the final sign-off of the logbook. Please make sure that you've got your details at the top here and that you sign it. Give it to your training officer or the person responsible for training at your company. Ask them to give you an evaluation, competent or not yet. You know what they're looking for. Work ethic, attitude, training. Who have you been as an employee at the company? You want them to find you competent. 
The person must then fill in some comments. It's a compulsory, like in P1. Their details at the bottom here, and very importantly, the company stamp. This page needs to be filled in and signed twice. Now, we are now turning to page 30. And page 30 has got guidelines for the P2 project report. The Engineering Council expects you to fill out a project report for any one of the projects that you completed. My advice to students is use the project that you enjoyed the most, the project where you got your best development, the project where you contributed your best contribution. Use that one as the project report. I've compiled this guideline to create some uniformity amongst the projects that I receive from students. You'll note that first of all I asked you to give me a title page and then an index page. Please remember that this project report needs to be typed and needs to be bound in a similar way but separately from the logbook. The first chapter in your project report is company background. There's a description here of what it is that I need from you in terms of company background. If you turn back to page 11, you'll see three items listed at the bottom here. Those three items listed are the details that I need for that section of the project. The first item is the organizational structure, or in other words, the organogram of the company. Who's in charge? Who are the managers? Where are you in this organizational structure or organogram? The, section, the next section that I need is a plant, workshop, or office layout. What I need from you there is an aerial view, an aerial photograph, or a plan of the facility where you did your training. The third item is the plant, workshop or office operation. Give me a written description of how that environment functions. For example, if it's a factory, you have raw materials which are coming in, those raw materials get processed, there's machining, there's all sorts of things taking place. Give me a description of how that facility functions. Let's go back to page 30. So once you've completed that first chapter, the company background, you're now writing for me a problem definition. This project was solving a problem. Can you define what that problem was? The next section is a solution description. Describe to me how this project was going to solve this problem. What was the solution that was formulated? At P2 level, the Engineering Council expects you to complete a series of engineering calculations which are relevant to the project that you were completing. Those calculations can be of many things. They can typically be forces and stresses, any performance calculations, for example, pressures, flow rates, velocities, anything like that. They could even be related to costs. They could even be related to dimensional calculations. Any calculations relevant to the problem that you're solving. You must include a series of technical drawings in your project report. Those technical drawings could have been completed by you or by somebody else, but they need to be included into your project. Please make sure that you bind them into the logbook. Second last section is the discussions and conclusions. Now typically here, what I'm expecting you to report on, what is the situation before, during and after the project? So typically, what led to the requirement of this project being completed? What were the activities during the project? What was the situation after the project was completed? Did you install this device or solution? Was it commissioned? Did it run? Did you actually solve the problem? Many students in discussions and conclusions, what they do is they include photographs, if allowed, into the project so that they show a development of the project as it took place. The very last section are your references. Here you can include things like tables, graphs, charts, any background information which is relevant to the completion of this project. Some students include quality control reports, orders placed, those kind of things. Anything which is relevant.
We are now at the last section. P2 has an exit level outcome associated to it. The exit level outcome that is relevant is exit level outcome 10. You'll see it here at the top. And exit level outcome 10 or ELO 10 is engineering professionalism. The Engineering Council wants to get a sense that our graduates, when they complete a national diploma, know what it means to be a professional, to work in a professional environment and to behave in a professional manner. The way you're going to do this is by filling out this report, which is the last three pages of your logbook. There are three headings that you need to report on. The first one is professional ethics. The second is responsibilities. The third is norms of engineering technical practice. Now, as you're sitting here at the moment, you don't know what this means. I've written a guideline for you to help you understand what it is that you have to write in this report in order to satisfy ELO 10. The first one is professional ethics. You can report on any Engineering Council of South Africa or South African Institute of Mechanical Engineer or any other professional expectations, requirements and conduct as required and practiced by the company and its employees. Responsibilities. You can report on any of the company's values, which could be things like safety, accountability, honesty, integrity, care, concern and any others that are listed here. Please read this. It will help you. The third one is norms of engineering technical practice. You need to report on any behaviors such as be proactive rather than reactive or things like make sure that it's right for the first time or any slogans which the company has which they use to guide people in the work that they do. You'll see that it's also described that any occupational health and safety, quality, and management systems which are used by the company should also be reported on. What I would suggest you do is get yourself a notepad and make notes during the course of your P2 on things that you are picking up on these items that are listed here. Make appointments with people in your company. Talk to people that are behaving in professional ways. Interrogate any of these professional practices and report on them. My advice to you is make a copy of this report, fill the information in on a preliminary basis. You're welcome to email it to me for proofreading and I can give you guidance on what you're describing and what you should be describing. My advice also is make sure that what you describe in this ELO 10 report is your journey, your development, how what you are reporting has changed you so that you can prove to the Engineering Council that you know what it means to be a professional, to work in a professional environment and to conduct yourself in a professional manner. Your supervisor will then need to comment and sign off here before you submit the logbook. Please note that this ELO 10 is of such a nature that should you fail the ELO, you will not pass the P2. Thank you very much for your attention. The University of Johannesburg. Rethink. Reinvent.